Here's a very common problem with students. Let's say they're about to turn right here, but they don't see much to the left because of the parked cars. When advancing to see better, they advance with the car too straight. Two main problems with this. First is that when you turn, you risk overflowing into the opposite lane. The narrower the street, the more this is true. By pointing the car to the right a bit, you're already in the right trajectory for the turn. Second is that your vision to the left is not as good if the car is too straight. In this case, it's not that bad because the street is not too narrow and there is no vehicle parked right at the intersection. But in narrower streets, with vehicles parked close, it makes a big difference. Like here, I'm advancing straight until I see almost to the end of the street. Notice that I had to advance until my right mirror is more or less aligned with the middle of the street. Now here I'm advancing while already turning a bit to the right, again until I almost see the end of the street, and notice that now I only had to advance until my right mirror is aligned with the left back light of the car parked to my right. And the reason for that is that because of that diagonal position, I have a better angle of vision. So when you need to advance to see better to the left, start advancing while turning a bit. That's also one of the reasons why many cities forbid you to park a certain distance from the intersection, usually 5 meters, because if you do, you block the vision to people coming from the perpendicular street. When turning, you should always turn into the first available lane, and this is the reason why. If two people want to turn to the same side from opposite directions, they can do it at the same time. Now this is a three-lane street, but it's the same for a two-lane. And when I say first available lane, that means that if there is anything preventing you from going into the first physical lane, like parked vehicles, construction, if it's a lane reserved for buses and so on, then you go into the next available lane, the second in this case. If the second is also blocked by something, you go into the third and so on. Be aware also of bicycle paths, spacers, or any other thing that could be there. That's usually not as much an issue when turning left, because the left lane is normally always available, but there could be some exceptions. If two vehicles need to turn into the same lane, whoever turns right has priority. At some intersections, you can turn right or left from multiple lanes. Like here, both the rightmost lane and the second from the right allow us to turn right. You can see that indicated by this panel here. So make sure that you respect the lane you need to go into. Now a question I get all the time is, why do I need to do my verifications when turning right? Since I'm already in the right lane, there won't be any vehicle between me and the sidewalk. Well, there shouldn't be any motor vehicles, but there could be pedestrians or smaller road users like cyclists, skateboarders, go-peds, and so on. Now I hear you saying, yes, but I could see them when approaching the intersection, since there's nothing between me and the sidewalk. And you're right, but you still should do it. And here's an example. I'm about to turn right at the next intersection, and I see this pedestrian walking here. My brain calculates that since he's walking, I have plenty of time to reach the intersection before him. But then the bus arrives, and it just happens that this guy is in a hurry and really needs to catch this bus. So he starts running. My brain calculated earlier that he was walking and that'd be okay. But now he's running. So by the time I'm about to turn, he might be about to cross the street. When there are parked vehicles at the intersection, it's even more important. See this bicycle path? It's on the other side of the parked vehicles. Now notice this cyclist, he's now behind the parked van. Now imagine this driver wanted to turn right at this intersection. In this case he can't, because the street is a one way to the left, but let's say it's a street where you can turn right. There's no way you'll be able to see the cyclist if he doesn't do his verifications immediately before turning. Now here you could probably see him because there are no parked vehicles here, but there could be. And even when they're not hidden by parked vehicles, like here, the light just turned green and he flies past me. If I started turning right away, I'd hit him. And they can even be on sidewalks. They're not allowed to ride on them, but they often do. So same thing here. If there's a parked vehicle here and this guy wants to turn right at the next street, he won't be able to see him. Another example, this diagonal bicycle path. The cyclists won't be right next to me, they'll come from there. And don't focus only on what's behind you. Check to the front too. Cyclists are smaller road users, so sometimes students tend to not see them. So get into the habit of doing your verifications before turning at intersections. Be especially careful when turning next to big vehicles, you might want to double check. This is also very important at the exam. Parents and friends might not teach you this, they don't see the point of doing it, 
because there shouldn't be any vehicles to your right since you're already in the right lane. And here's something you cannot do. You can't turn in front of a bus that's momentarily stopped. You could do it if he stopped indefinitely with its hazard lights on. If not, you need to change lanes to the right and wait behind it until it goes. There's the possibility of it going when you're turning. And also, with a vehicle this big, there's no way you could see anybody that could be between it and the sidewalk. Now, earlier I said that there shouldn't be any motor vehicles between you and the sidewalk, but if you leave too much room between you and the right before turning, some smaller vehicles, like motorcycles or scooters, for example, might try to squeeze in there, even if they're not supposed to. Especially in situations like this one, where this guy puts his signal at the last second, so they might not know that he wants to turn. So try to center yourself as much as possible in the lane before turning. And here's another thing that you cannot do. Obviously, very dangerous. In the next and last video in this series, turning right at a red light, yields, and staying centered before turning. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.